Cities like New York, Toronto, London, and Sydney have extremely expensive housing, not just because a lot of people want to live there, although that's obviously true too, but because of dysfunctional housing policies that limit how much housing can be built. But given the unfortunate reality that these cities are very expensive, does it ever make financial sense to live in them? Are you crazy for trying to make it work instead of giving up and moving somewhere else with more reasonable housing costs? The first question to ask is whether you want to buy or rent your home. High cost of living cities often have an interesting dynamic where rent is bad but the price to buy is even worse. If we were to move from Ottawa, the mid sized Canadian city where we currently live, to Toronto, our rent would increase by 40%, but the price to buy a home would increase by 80%. If we're happy to keep renting, Moving to Toronto might be doable, with some lifestyle deflation, but if we're intent on buying a home, Toronto is much more of a stretch. In the US, moving from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles means paying 60% more to rent, but 140% more to buy. Moving from Chicago to New York means 80% higher rent, but 250% more to buy. You can see a similar pattern when moving from Manchester to London in the UK, from Adelaide to Sydney in Australia from Cork to Dublin in Ireland, or from Christchurch to Auckland in New Zealand. In general, high cost of living cities are closer to being practical if you're renting. If you really want to own, probably look elsewhere. Next up is transportation. Cities with expensive housing like New York, London, Sydney, and Toronto usually have better than average public transit and walkability. The higher costs of housing in expensive cities can often be offset by savings on transportation, if living there allows you to own fewer cars or no cars at all. The cost of a car depends on a lot of factors, but a recent estimate here in Canada put a used 2017 Honda Civic at about $1,000 a month. If we owned one car in our more car-centric city of Ottawa and sold it when moving, that could cover an extra $1,000 a month on rent in the new city. That's a lot of money. Not enough to afford a world city like New York or London, but enough to cover the added rent if we move to a more expensive regional city like Toronto, Vancouver, Sydney, or Philadelphia. Now, in real life, we don't actually own a car in Ottawa, so we don't really have this cost to cut. In that case, our costs will be lower if we stay in Ottawa because we don't have to pay for a car or for big city rents. Similarly, if you're going to need or want a car regardless of where you live, you're better off seeking a city with cheaper housing too. But if a city with more expensive housing does allow you to ditch a car, the savings are often substantial enough to cover the increased rent. The next thing to consider when deciding whether you can handle a city with expensive housing is how much housing dominates your monthly budget. People on the lower end of the income spectrum tend to spend most of their money on basic necessities like food and shelter. So housing differences between cities can make or break their budget in a way that isn't really the case for higher income people whose budgets are not as dominated by basic needs. It's not just about income, though. A single person renting an apartment on their own is more sensitive to housing costs than a couple splitting an apartment, even if the couple gets a somewhat bigger apartment. If moving from Buffalo to Boston means spending $1,500 more per month for rent, that's a lot easier to handle when split between two people. On the other hand, having kids makes you more sensitive to housing costs, because kids need more space but don't bring in any money. Finally, you have to ask whether living in the more expensive city gives you a pay bump. You can compare average incomes across different cities to get a general idea of what to expect, but a lot of it depends on your specific industry and job. Registered nurses are exceptionally well-paid in San Francisco, 80% more than in Dallas. That can cover a big chunk, although maybe not all, of the enormous housing differences between the two cities. Not all jobs are so lucky, though. Electricians make 60% more in San Francisco, while teachers only make 30% more. Retail workers are the worst off. On top of generally low salaries, their pay boost in San Francisco over Dallas is a paltry 20%, which doesn't even come close to covering the additional housing costs in the Bay Area. Of course, remote work flips this whole dynamic on its head. Depending on your job, you might be able to land a big city income, but live in a more reasonable housing market. In this video, we covered the four biggest factors to consider when deciding whether to make the move to a high cost of living city. Cities with expensive housing usually make more sense if you want to rent instead of buy. They make more sense if living there lets you sell a car, and substantially lower your transportation costs. They make more sense if you have a higher income, obviously, 
but also if you're a two-income household rather than a one-income household. And finally, they make more sense if you work in a job that gets a big pay boost in the expensive city that you're considering, which depends on the job and the city. In the US, you can look at the Intuit Mint Salary database to get an idea of what to expect. Although keep in mind that some smaller cities or less common jobs don't have as much data. Obviously, none of this accounts for non-financial considerations. Living near friends and family might be worth spending more money. And transportation isn't just about money, but also quality of life. We can get by without a car in Ottawa, but it's not as convenient as in a city like Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver. Moving to a more walkable, transit-focused city wouldn't save us money, but it would give us a better quality of life given that we don't own a car. Bigger, more expensive cities also usually have more convenient connections to other cities by train or plane. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Don't forget to bike and subscribe, and a special thanks to our supporters on Patreon.